big move guys ukrainian special units started approaching the final lines of defense of russians the russian losses are also up 90 percent and ukrainians decided to target moscow but more about all of this in just a couple of minutes what's up investors it's the russian dude and let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous russian propaganda oh. Today we have this guy in one of Russian supermarkets who is wearing a pretty interesting tracksuit with the wolf in the back. Okay, this part is acceptable. But then there are pants which also have the head of the wolf. And the location of the head of the wolf is rather questionable, right between the guy's buttocks. And I mean, the wolves are kinda lone animals and are very proud animals, so I do not think they will approve the position of their heads in these places on humans. And also just as a Russian, yes, we do love our tracksuits, but this thing, this thing scares me. And speaking about the merch, some very cool things are coming. So guys, if you want to stay tuned, just please consider once again, as always, liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And also, if you want to see some very interesting sneak peeks and what is exactly this white t-shirt, what's on the back of this t-shirt, please go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I will be releasing some very intriguing photos there very soon. The link is down below. And so yes, now let's talk about Ukrainians deciding to target Moscow and also eliminating a couple of very important traders. Then we're gonna switch our attention to the east of the country where losses of Russians are up 90% and we finalize everything in the south where a small special unit of Ukrainians started approaching the final lines of defense of Russians. And so yes, first of all, according to the head of Ukrainian defense company Ukar Abaron Prom, Mr. Smitanin, he is saying that the company is working on some missiles which will be able to reach Moscow. This statement was made several weeks ago, but already last weekend some very interesting things started to happen in Moscow, specifically this warehouse of these so-called specialized vehicles spontaneously as always got caught on fire and up to 2000 square meter meters were ignited. Besides that, a Ukrainian traitor, Mr. Kiva, who was publishing a lot of anti-Ukrainian things, mainly in his Telegram channel, he recently was eliminated in Moscow. And later on, the Ukrainian defense intelligence, they confirmed that this was their work. Besides that, as we get closer to Ukraine, to Kursk region, which is bordering to Ukraine, here is the video of a Russian soldier driving most likely a very high position officers in his car and then spontaneously driving over a landmine, most likely previously left there also by Ukrainian forces. And just when you thought that this was already enough, no. Recently, in Luhansk region, the so-called deputy of Luhansk People Republic, Oleg Popov, he also fell asleep for a very long time, most likely indefinitely, inside his car. But wait, there is more. Now, here is a video from Donetsk region, where recently a local oil storage also was attacked most likely by Ukrainians. Russians were hesitant to acknowledge it was the work of Ukrainian forces, but in the end they said that, yeah. And so, as you can see, their defense of Russians is extremely inefficient, to say the least. And so, yes, now, as promised, let me give you an extremely quick update from the east of Ukraine, where Russian losses are up 90% before finalizing everything in the south. And first of all, as we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians continued their offensive along Kupiansk, Svate, Kremino front line, also next to Bakhmut and Avdiivka, and reportedly made some small gains to the north of Avdiivka. Then we also have this video from Liman front line, where a Russian helicopter is landing in the open field. And then later it is being targeted and destroyed by Ukrainian HIMARS. Next, right here is yet another video of a new Ukrainian heavy drone called Baba Yaga, operating in Luhansk region and is uh, dropping some 
uh, very loud devices on top of Russian military vehicles, subsequently destroying them as well. And yet another pretty devastating for Russians video came to us from Bakhmut, where Russians are driving inside their tank thing, they are pretty much protected from everything. Then just be completely annihilated by Ukrainian drone. And we even have the second part of this video where the next Russian soldiers, they start walking next to this tank and you can pretty much see that there is absolutely nothing left from this machine. What is even more interesting is that once again this tank was destroyed in the open field and then the regular Russian infantry arrived to the same, very same place which Ukrainians already have access to attack it. And they started filming this video also in the open field without any protection whatsoever. And then as we move to Avdivka, right here are several pictures of the US infantry fighting vehicle called Bradley, which Ukrainians are using there, and they also installed the additional protection called Brat. And as mentioned previously, the only small advancement that Russians were able to gain in the last 24 to 48 hours was to the southeast of Stepove, as you can see from this map. But Ukrainians at the same time were also able to take back a small part of this road right here. But nevertheless, the most devastating part about all this Avdiivka offensive for Russians is that since they started it approximately back in October of this year, their losses are up 90% and the advancement is pretty much non-existent. The losses are even higher than those Russians suffered in Bakhmut. And the only reason why Russians were successful in Bakhmut, unlike in Avdiivka, it was thanks to, quote unquote, Wagner, which they do not have right now. So right now what is happening, as you can see, Russians are losing even more people, advancing way less than they used to. So pretty much to say the least, Ukrainians are extremely successful and defending their positions and Russians, they simply do not adjust to the current realities. Obviously, this is very good for the Ukrainian forces. And so yes, now as promised, the last, uh, very last thing, let's talk about the south of Ukraine and that the special units start to approach the final lines of defense of Russians, which to be honest came as pretty unexpected news. But first of all, last night, Russians did once again massive drone attack against the territory of Ukraine. Majority of these drones allegedly were coming from the territory of Crimea against the southern regions of Ukraine. And Ukrainian air defense was able to intercept 41 out of 48 Russian Shahid drones. At the same time, Ukrainians reportedly were able to destroy a Russian military base on this island area in the Dnipro River. And according to them also a reconnaissance group of Russians, which was preparing to do some sabotage activity on the other side of Kherson region, this group was also destroyed. Our next stop brings us to already a relatively familiar settlement called Hladkivka. If you remember from my yesterday's episode, this is where a Russian military convoy with 76 Russian soldiers was completely ambushed and devastated, leaving zero to none chances for the Russian soldiers. And today we also had the second part of this video, which shows that Ukrainians used their own shark reconnaissance drone, which was able to locate this military convoy and then coordinate the future fire. And this is pretty much completes the full picture of this so-called thriller. You can see that the Russians are loading in the trucks, then these trucks being completely obliterated, destroyed, and then the remaining Russian soldiers, the ones who arrive to this place, all they have to do is to simply remove their comrades who fell asleep. And if you have not seen that video of the consequences of this devastating ambush, once again, please go ahead and watch it. It is still available on my Patreon. And also you can see today's video to pretty much reestablish, to reconnect the dots so you can see the full picture, the full chain of events that led to the total destruction and just brilliant work of the Ukrainian reconnaissance. And as always, this fully uncensored footage along with the fully uncensored episodes of the Russian Dude are always available on my Patreon, the link is down below. This is also the best way to support the channel, starting only as little as $4 for the entire month and the link is down below. Thank you so much. 
And as we get back to the south of Ukraine, specifically to Kherson region, also you might remember that approximately a week or two ago, a Ukrainian sniper established a world record with the biggest, with the longest distance elimination of 3.8 kilometers. This is approximately, if I'm not mistaken, if my math is correct, I would say about 2.5 miles. And so today we have some additional details of this record. Pretty much the sniper is a 58-year-old Ukrainian Vyacheslav Kavalsky, who was working in cooperation with his partner to create this record elimination. They were pretty much they were pretty much doing calculations for everything, the speed of wind, the humidity, the distance, every single thing they can possibly take into consideration to make this lucky shot. And in the end, they're able to do it. And for those of you who have not seen the video of this record elimination, yes, I do have it on my Patreon as well. And besides all that, according to the new Ukrainian Defense Minister Rostam Umerov, Right now, Ukrainians slowly but surely approaching the final, the third line of defense of Russians. And most likely, this is the work of the smaller special units of approximately 10 to 20 people. Because this allows them to be extremely mobile, agile. This allows them to be less detectable by the Russians, simply because the number of people is not that great. It is not the work of the Ukrainian army as a whole. This is once again the achievement of numerous special units of Ukrainians. And because of this, they are able to approach the position of Russians as close as possible, engage in the reconnaissance at force, eliminate some Russian soldiers, officers, potentially capture some prisoners of war and other important documents. So pretty much as you can see, Ukrainians might not be advancing significantly in the south of their own country, but the work still goes on. Ukrainians are assembling the force, the motivation, the information, everything they need for the future potential liberating counteroffensive of the South. And so, as always, if you do appreciate this style of quick daily updates about the Russian-Ukrainian war, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Only takes one clip and you're more than welcome in our community. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support and see you tomorrow.